My name is Benjamin. Benjamin Barton. How old are you? Seven. But I look a lot older. God bless you. He's seven. <laughs> In today's episode, we'll be diving into the world of aging research. Inspired by movies like The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and In Time. Allow me to introduce my mother-in-law, Clara, my wife, Michelle, and my daughter, Sylvia. Which provoke us to think about aging, time, and the value of our lives. Get ready for some cutting-edge science and the latest findings from the Sinclair Lab at Harvard Medical School. Let's jump right in. For centuries, humans have sought the secret to eternal youth, searching for ways to slow down or even reverse the aging process. In his book, Lifespan, David A. Sinclair offers a new perspective on aging. According to Sinclair, aging is the result of a loss of information in our DNA. Telomeres, the protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes, shorten over time, and this contributes to aging. The good news? Research suggests we might be able to slow down this process, and even extend our lifespans. Now, let's dive into the groundbreaking research conducted at the Sinclair Lab in Harvard Medical School. They've been working on various projects, all aimed at understanding aging and finding ways to prolong our lifespans. One of their projects focuses on the role of epigenetic changes in aging. The epigenome is not digital, it's mostly analog. And anyone who's old enough to have had an analog device, whether it's a tape recorder or a record player or record, these things get disrupted, they get scratched. It's very bad, very poor at copying information. And that's true for the epigenome as well. Copying epigenetic information doesn't work that well. What is the epigenome? It's the structures that wrap up the DNA and say, say that this gene A should be on in a brain cell, but in a liver cell should be off. And this gene B should be off in a skin cell but should be on in a kidney. By inducing DNA breaks in mice, they've discovered that young cells can reset after DNA repair, while older cells experience more significant changes in gene expression. The team is now working on reversing this aging process. Another project in the lab involves reprogramming cells to be young again. By delivering reprogramming genes to specific tissues or the entire body, they've been able to make cells act younger and even heal wounds faster. They're currently focusing on nerve regeneration and reversing other symptoms of aging. The Sinclair Lab is also developing drugs that slow down aging. They've discovered that the level of a molecule called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide NAD+, declines with age. They're now working on molecules that raise NAD+, levels, testing their effects on aging and age-related diseases, with some already in human clinical trials. Their research on mitochondria has led to the discovery of ongoing asynchrony between nuclear and mitochondrial genomes during aging. By utilizing novel genetic and pharmacological approaches, they're working on restoring metabolic function in aged mice back to youthful levels. One of these mice has been on the sirtuin activating molecule called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotides. And hopefully you can guess which of these mice has been rejuvenated from an old state. These are really old mice, they're almost two years of age, and only one of them has been drinking NMN in the water, and if you've picked the mouse on the right, you'd be wrong. The lab is even working on projects that could potentially delay menopause and reverse female infertility. They're using their knowledge of aging and metabolism to identify genes in small molecules that can reactivate ovarian stem cells, which could have revolutionary implications for women's health. Movies like The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and In Time explore unique perspectives on aging and the value of time. As we discuss these scientific advancements, it's essential to consider the ethical implications and the societal consequences of potentially extending our lifespan significantly. So, can we live forever? With the incredible progress being made in understanding the aging process, we may be able to extend our lifespans and improve our quality of life as we age, perhaps even redefining what it means to grow old. And that wraps up today's episode on aging research and the quest for extended lifespans. This is Science Today, signing off. Stay curious, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next episode for more exciting scientific discoveries. I'm Daisy. I'm Benjamin.